Nick Evans, former All Black, Harlequins assistant coach, also involved with England during the Six Nations. He joins us. Welcome back to the show, mate. No problem, mate. So you're still at Harlequins, obviously. You were part of the England setup. What happened with that? Yeah, it was um, it was it was, it was a great honour to to be be selected. I think um, uh, Steve Walter was meant to take over from Eddie Jones after the World Cup, but uh, Eddie got the got the sack, and um, I think there was a bit of a transition period. So um, I got an opportunity to go in there and um, for the Six Nations and coach the attack. And um, I, I think they they wanted me for for the World Cup, um, but obviously I'm was contracted at Quinn's um, and, you know, they probably had final say over that and it got a bit sticky. So, uh, look, I, I took a lot of learnings from it. Uh, it was a great experience. Um, definitely improved as a coach, um, developed in a lot of areas. So I, I took that learning and, and, and kind of just went with the Quinn's way and, and went back and we're, we're fully into preseason now. Gosh, preseason already. I mean, obviously we're in our test season now. We're starting the big Rugby World Cup build up, mate. So did you watch the games last weekend? What do you think? I did, mate. It was um, yeah, brilliant. I think um, the box were the box were powerful. Probably the best way to describe it. Um, Australia got a lot of work to do, and uh, I think um, you know defensively the box. Uh, sorry, defensively they they gave up nearly odd twenty odd clean breaks. Australia, so there's a lot of work to do in there. I mean, I didn't I didn't even a clue what their kicking strategy was, and it played into the South Africans' hands, and and they um, they dominated the game from from start to finish, and um, and obviously you know I'm sitting here looking at the 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 replacements for the game against New Zealand and I mean that in itself tells the story of, of the squad that they're building for the World Cup so um, but the All Blacks look good I, I thought they were brilliant it was a good start um, you know they they looked uh, they looked unpredictable um, you know they changed they, they changed a lot of the way they played they looked variable which is great um, they looked fast powerful I thought Argentina looked poor I mean I mean for an example you know they they had um, New Zealand had three three seven-man lineups and they won it right at the back. I mean, they, and Argentina had two pods there waiting for it and they still couldn't win it. So, you know, it's not often you see an Argentinian scrum go backwards as well. So I, I thought New Zealand were, were, were good and uh, it sets up nicely for this weekend. Yeah, how big a test is this? I mean, this is probably, you know, if you look at the fixtures that the All Blacks have got to face, we've got to play, play South Africa again in London, a couple against Australia. But this you could just about tick as being the toughest game ahead of that World Cup opener. I think this will this will give a real good indication of, of where both teams are, uh, especially the All Blacks. I think um, you know the, the the chat coming out of the Savin camp is is like this is this is the ultimate test. You, you know, um, New Zealand South Africa is 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 what the you know test rugby for South Africa is all about, and um, they've, they've selected a, a team that reflects that. Um, you know, the nine that went down to New Zealand ahead uh, are ready to go. The bench is stacked. Um, New Zealand coming off a really good performance. Do they change the way they, they play? Obviously, the, the kicking strategy was interesting. They didn't kick off nine at all, really, uh, uh, against Argentina. I suspect that'll change a little bit against South Africa because you, you have to stay in the fight against them and, and take the moments when they come. Um, or do they try and double down on, on the tactics from the weekend? So, oh, look, I, I, I think it's, um, you know, you don't win a World Cup in a game like this. Um, I think goes it obviously goes a long way to winning the championship, but um, I, I think it'll give a good indication of, of where this all-black team is. Ireland and France, uh, you know, with so much chatter down here about how good those two teams are. We saw them in the Six Nations. What are your thoughts going into that World Cup? Do you, uh, uh, Ireland, that team to beat? Do, I mean, they do they deserve their number one seed? I think they do. I think they do. If you're asking me personally, I think South Africa are the team to beat. Um, but I think Ireland and France are very, very strong. Um, Ireland have got a, uh, have been building for a number of years now. You know, they're seven years down the track. Um, you know, Andy Farrell took over from from Joe Smith, um, and there they had a real cohesive unit, and and they've just carried that through. And what they are really good at is they're very good around the detail, very very powerful around the ruck. Their ruck work is, uh, especially in attack, is, is is one of the best in the world at, at creating quick ball for Gibson Park and and, and Johnny Sexton if he's uh, if he's going to be around, obviously. But um, look, I I think their pack goes underrated. Um, the difference between them and probably probably France, France have probably got the power that can actually match South Africa and Ireland. Um, that they are a big unit, um, and having coached against them in um, in the Six Nations and just seeing the the English pack against this French pack. I mean, you've got their um, their lineup jumping number six that that that, were, that was dwarfing um, you know Mario Toje and guys like that. So they have a pack that can that can really. Um, match the power power teams, um, and they've got the magician in Dupont, who is 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 
I mean, I've seen it firsthand. He's he's one of the best on the planet. Unbelievable at what he can create. So, um, yeah, I, I think they deserve where they where they are. They, they, they've played well and, and they've got the results to to back it up. Fascinating weekend ahead of us here, mate. And uh, look, I mean, and look, we won't stop talking about this till come September, will we? I mean, this is the great thing about it, Nick, as well. You know, and I mean, a lot of people have been saying. But just for rugby fans, going into a World Cup, finally, where genuinely none of us know. I mean, any one of six teams could probably beat each other on the day. Can one of those teams get consistent enough to win three test matches, quarter semi-final and back-to-back weekends? That's it. I think I think exactly like you say, this is this is the World Cup we've all been waiting for. I think, you know, the previous probably two and three, yeah, there's been maybe three that could that can go on and win it realistically as you said there there's five or six that can do it now and it's going to come down to, to to who can string the games together who can who can play knockout rugby and i think the the important thing is to look at how you know entertainment probably doesn't win world cups it's it's the teams that 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 are going to go in that have the game that can win those knockout games when the pressure comes on and and certainly as for me i think New, um, South Africa are probably leading that. Ireland have a very good game that can do that. Certainly, New Zealand are in with a mix. Um, I think they're going to go in under the radar a little bit, which will be interesting for uh, for the New Zealand public to to watch. Um, but but I think that's good for them. Um, I think I think England are going to just try and be really hard to beat, having been there and around the camp. They're going to play a, a strong kicking game, very defensive minded, and, and just try and stay in games and. As I said, you know they're on the right side of the draw, so they could easily find their way to a semi-final, and then it comes down, you know, two games and you win the World Cup. So, who can who can back it up? Uh, who can go, you know, repeat good performances after good performances, especially in the later part of the tournament, is is the key. Well, you know, you're still hell popular down here, man. People would love to see you back here. When's that going to happen? <laughs> Yeah, no, look, I, um, this is my 16th year up in the UK for Quinns. Um, you know, still really enjoying the challenge up here. Love working in a, in a, in a marathon and a slog that is the premiership, but also, you know, coaching and playing in, in Europe was, is, is fantastic. But, you yeah, know, certainly looking for a way to get back home and, and, and get back to New Zealand rugby because that's obviously, you know, th- that gave me the opportunity for me to come over here and, and do what I do. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully looking forward to being back one day and, um, yeah, hopefully coaching teams back there.